What's up guys, Curtis here and welcome to a brand new episode of the Journeyman Save. I think this might be episode 4 or 5 of the season, maybe 4. I fixed the colour correction, my voice is going a little bit as well, I fixed the colour correction on the webcam because I realised it makes me look like a, like a literally like I'm white. I've actually got a bit of a tan just to prove to you, look at that tan line. I'm actually really tanned at the moment but it never looks like it because of my camera. I, I was away for a week. I have nothing to show for it. Roll the intro! That was like way more dramatic than I planned it to be. Right, what have you guys missed? When did I last see ya? Rostov. This is the worst game I've had ever on Football Manager. We lost 2-1 to UFA who are 15th in the division. Just look at this. Match stats, 21 shots to 3, 2 clear-cut chances to their 1, 4 half chances. They scored a clear-cut chance on a long shot. Their, sec their third shot didn't come until like the 88th minute. We dominated them. It's sickening. We did then go on to beat Spartak Nalchik and Spartak Moscow. Two big wins. And that actually does mean that as things stand, we sit three points top of the table. Because I believe Locomotive... There we go. They they lost their last game. They also... Uh, sorry, they drew their last game. And they also, they also happened to lose at the same time as us losing. So, works out alright, really. Um, but that's not what we're here for at the moment. We have a semi-final against CS... No, sorry. We are CSK Moscow. How long have we been here and I still don't know who we're managing? We have a semi-final against Cuban... I always think it's Krasnodar, but I think that is Krasnodar. I don't know they, I don't know if this is Cuban Krasnodar as well. Whatever. But we play them and then we play Ruben Kazan. It's going to be a double header. We're going to play two big games. It's going to be a quick episode though, because I don't want to sit here waiting around for ages. We're just going to get things done. Right. I've got a couple youngsters on the bench, we've got a couple experienced players on the bench, we can have a few options like that. I'm ready to go, let's go and beat Cuban. I'm just going to call him K, K, K. Right, everyone's morale is good, we've just won two on the bounce, I really bigged everyone up for it. The the UFA, UFA game, I, uh, I kind of was like, look, freak accidents happen, get over it. Deming's coming forward now though, he's the most miserable one in the side and that was one of the most pathetic shots I have seen in my time as a manager. I have lost the battery pack for this so I have to have it plugged in and it's really, really, really annoying on my desk. Right, nil nil, 10 minutes, we've barely touched the ball, well we've had 43% of the ball but that doesn't feel like much. My assistant manager is just telling me that we haven't had any of the ball and then we got loads of it. Tielemans whips it in. Murray at the near post. Plays an incredible pass to McNamara. How that has found him, I don't know. McNamara has scored one goal before and it was an incredible long shot. I'm excited to see what this goal was like. It was like 35 yards out. I'm also going to move my mic closer. I hope this is better now, guys. Murray... I, I'm no, I took a massive deflection. I have no words as to how he found McNamara on the way through then. That's quite ridiculous. Demon on the ball now to Tiemann's. Kuznetsov on the right hand side. He gets it somehow across again. How do our defenders keep getting these ridiculous crosses over? I think we're about to be in... Have we, did we get a final with the, the Cypriot team? Not easy. Granite. Did we get a final with Granite? Did we win anything? We've got a manager of the month. Did we win anything with Granite? I'm sure... No, it would be in competition wins. Have I ever reached a final? We had runners-up in the Caribbean Championship. Runners-up in the Belarusian Cup. There we go. I knew I got to, the, got to the final before. So we have reached a final at some point in our life. So if we win this, it wouldn't be our first final. Okay. I did need to just go and check that. So, we've never won anything, though, as a manager. We could be doing the double this season. It's completely possible. We could win everything that we could possibly have won this year. Incredible reverse pass there from Demin. I thought it was going to the other man. It goes to Elenia. We're 3-0 up after 27 minutes away from home in a cup semi-final. This was a ball and a half. I thought it was going to McNamara. Wow. Wow. Love that. I love how we've got a few English boys like in the core of the squad as well. We've got Murray, we've got McNamara. A mix all like the, the European, you've got like Russians, Belgians, Spanish, the lot. And then just a couple little Brits just messing around. Yuri Demin, 4-0 at half time. This is incredible. Why are we so clinical in the cup? This has happened two times in the cup before. We won 8-1 and then wasn't it like 6 or something like that? We've scored a lot of goals in this cup. How bizarre. 
Not going to complain. Demin, it's nice to see him having a good game because I feel like he's not been very good lately. It's currently 4-0. They're coming forward with the ball, but it's cut out by Kuznetsov, who plays it to Shellander, who's yet to be involved yet. And he hits the post with one of the most speculative attempts I've ever seen. My ears just started ringing. That was a horrific feeling. It felt like I was going deaf. Sorry, I literally had to stop then because it felt like my head was going to explode. I think my hay fever is quite bad today too, which is always nice. Shellander on the ball now, plays it to Demin. He gets dispossessed. It goes to Kassap. What's the time? It's half past six. Ooh, time to open some La Liga packs, I think, guys. La, La Liga team of the season has just come out half an hour ago at the time you're recording this. I don't think you're going to see this till Tuesday, maybe. I've recorded quite a bit ahead to make sure, because I'm away this weekend, as always. I'm, I'm away every weekend to make sure you guys can see. Somehow that ended up in a goal, so make sure you guys can keep getting videos. I've uh, recorded a bunch in advance. And um, I'm also going to try and edit it on my MacBook. Because I'm not like going away, away this time. I'm just going to stay at my parents. Because I haven't seen them in ages. And um, I'm literally just going back home. Whereas like the last flipping 15 weeks, not been within flipping two hours of my house. Right, I don't know what I'm waffling on about. The team are playing unbelievably. I feel like I need to take off Yuri Demin for Osipov now. Just give a youngster a go. And bring on Valerie Popov. For Miaznikov, there you go. There's another one. Another one. And another one. That'll do for now. We don't want to go and get our entire squad injured, do we? That'd be silly. Right, well, after that ridiculously exciting first half, we're 20 minutes into this second half and literally nothing is going on. It, it's horrific. Um, do I have any other players that could do with some game time? Let's just bring on Bogdanov. Do I want to do that? Yeah, Marcus Alonso's booked. There you go. I'm not even going to look. I'm that confident this is going to not be another goal. I literally said that and looked away and they scored. I feel like an idiot. The highlight didn't even end. Well, they, they've scored. They've been quite unlucky in this game. It's not been 5-1 at all. It should have It should have been like 3-1 maybe, a push 2-1. Like we've not outdone them that much. We've made a lot more chances, but yeah, we've not outdone them. Five minutes to go. They are about to get a second. Fair play to them. They've come out in the second half. I know we bought on three kids, but they are actually, uh, they are doing all right. They are doing okay. Odentsov pokes it home. 5-2. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Shellander hits the post. I don't really understand. My, my mind's like gone to mush on this game. I'm not really like focusing on what's even happening. I'm assuming it's over. I just want it to end. There's another highlight now. I played it long to Osipov. He doesn't win the header. Yuri Tielemans loses the ball as well. Popov does well to win it though. Shellander's coming forward. He plays it to Tielemans. Osipov! I wanted Osipov to get another goal. He scored every time he's played, I think. That's a bit of a shame, but nice effort nonetheless. Surely that's got to be it now. On to the next game. It's going to be just rapid fire. Get the games done in this episode. No messing around. Alenia! Oh, still not over. No one wants to see this boring free kick. Congratulations, lads. You've all dreamt of playing in the final, and now you're going to be doing it. I'm delighted for you all. You know that the competition is an absolute joke when three of the top five scorers are, play for the same team. I mean, Yuri Den Demin has barely even played in this cup, has he? Wait, what? I don't know how they reckon he's got that many goals then, because he's apparently only played two games. <laughs> Something's broken. Right, can I just say, guys, Leonid Slutsky, who is currently the manager of Rubin Kazan, in real life is the manager of Hull. What is your reaction to him uh, marking out Igor Akinfaev as CSK Moscow's so-called weak link for the upcoming match? Well, mate, do you know what I think of that? Mitrushkin has played the last eight games. If we just scroll up here, there's no sign of Akinfaev since the, the 2nd of December. Months ago. Why are you singling him out, you mug? Use your head. You slutsky. That's his name. Also, guys, I forgot to say, I don't know if you can even see this or not, but I got a little achievement earlier for scoring a goal in 30 consecutive matches. It actually happened after the 2-1 loss, but that means I think the last time we didn't score was a 2-0 loss against Terek a year ago today. Well, a year ago tomorrow. Today. A year ago tomorrow, yeah. My brain just melted down then. But that's mad. We've basically, if we score in this game, we've scored in every game for a year, which is quite cool. It's apparently something I've never done on this game before. So it shows buying Shellander definitely helped. Because if you look at last season, there was a few games that we didn't score. We didn't score there, didn't score there, didn't score there, didn't score there. I mean, it happened. It happened quite a bit. So I guess... Guess it helps. Right, we're about to play against Ruben Kazan in where we've drawn seven of the 11 fixtures against them. They're fifth. As it stands, though, Lokomotiv Moscow have just lost to Tom. 
So worst case is we stay three points clear. If we win this, we go six points clear at the top of the table, and we actually go 11 points clear of Terek, which means there would have to be an enormous mess up for us to not get Europa League, uh, Champions League. But Champions League isn't the priority. Doesn't interest me. What interests me is getting our first piece of silverware in the seventh biggest country in the world, league-wise. I mean, it's quite a big country, Russia, but that's not what I meant. You know what I mean. Come on, why are you being awkward? Right, I do want us to not start off so poorly, though, possession-wise. Demin hits it into Pomazan. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. We've had 58% possession. I looked at the wrong one. They played it long here. Murray has headed it uh, clear. I don't know if I made any changes in the last game that was not supposed to be in this one. Hopefully not. Samu has the ball on the right. He plays it over to Ignatovic, but Murray cuts it out with ease. McNamara, we're playing nice, quick football coming forward here. Elena plays it to Demin across to Tielemans. He has the ball. He goes for a very speculative shot into the top corner, and all he does is find the big hands of number 33. Ignatovic on the ball. They play a lovely little, almost like a 1 2. Mitrushkin pulls out the save of the century. That was unreal. What a man. He's on fire. Half an hour in now. None of our players are really performing all that well. We haven't really created anything yet. Half time, nil nil. I mean, at the end of the day, this takes us more than one result away from, from second place. But, I don't know. Come on, see. Ow, oh, that really hurt. It's probably quite loud too. Right, come on. Petruskin, long ball. Shellander needs to win this and knock it down. Lovely. Jorkaev on the ball. Very weird one, two. That's one of the. Strangest one twos I've ever seen, and it results in us hitting the crossbar that needed to go in. Pomazan's out here, they've played one of the craziest balls from what was my offside. Jorkaev plays a very ridiculous one back. We are playing long ball football, which is not what I like. We don't really have the target men on the pitch for it. Murray cuts it out though. We play it long, but it falls to the feet of Demin here. He's doing a very mazy run, but we lose it, and I'm worried about this one. Lestien is a good winger, but not as good as our flipping fullback. Shellander's coming forward in now. Don't shoot there. Get in the box. No, he can't get it on target. That was a really long highlight, and really, honestly, quite bad. I'd love to break the 50-point mark after 22 games. Come on. What changes? Shellander is having one of the worst games I've ever seen. Do we give Isaac a game for the first time ever, basically? Let's do this. We're doing this. Any other changes? No, I think we're good. I'm not going to take off the defence, because even though Miasnikov's on a 6.7, we haven't conceded, so it's the rest of the team just need to like pull their finger out, really. McNamara's picked up a book in. I'm going to go fluid, and I'm also going to go um, much higher tempo, be more expressive. The clock's clicking down in the background. Five minutes to go. The time's about to run out. I'm not going to make another change. I'll tell you what, it was a boring way to end the episode, but a nil-nil draw isn't that bad. We're now four points clear of Locomotive Moscow, which means we basically have a free game um, if the worst happens, if we drop drop a result. Do we still play Locomotive? Let me check to see if we still play against them. If we don't, I'm really confident. But at the same time, I, I like to think we could beat them. So let's see anyway. We still do play them, and the goalkeeper's ineligible, which is nice. That was the first thing I looked for. He's not even been started. He's injured. He's got a damaged shoulder. So you'd expect him to be back in the lineup. If we look here, when he was playing, wow. They're some of the craziest ratings I've seen a goalkeeper have. Granted, he got a 6.5 in this one. But if we go to this, I don't think I've ever seen a goalkeeper get so consistently over sevens. He then became an unused sub and got injured. If he goes on to be an unused sub, I'm going to kick off. This guy can't be better. Their team's so bad. How are they second? Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you did enjoy it. We've had a nice, nice little episode there. We're, we're built up for a final. I'm going to come back quite soon. We're going to play... Um, I think we're going to play... I want to get some more, some proper games in the season. So I'm only going to play Dynamo Moscow off stream, off camera. Then we're going to play against Tom and Zenit. And then we be, we'll be back for Locomotive Moscow and Cuban again. That should be, hopefully, two big away games. And then we'll finish it off with Angie last game of the season and Amkar in the final. So smash the like button if you did enjoy it. Like I said, it's a bit of a shorter one, but I hope it's okay nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, guys, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.